guys, I hope your week is going well. So as you can tell from the title and thumbnail of today's video, I've got quite a collection of sunscreens from Europe that I'm going to review for you guys today. This video is sponsored by you all because every single sunscreen in this video, a viewer was so nice and sent it to me <laughs> as PR for my, for my viewers. So thank you guys so much. You certainly do not need to do that. And I'm incredibly grateful that you do. It's very costly to ship things overseas. So thank you so much uh, for, for doing that. And hopefully, you know, in today's video, it's sort of a way to say thank you. Um, first up is uh, a sunscreen that I recently acquired from one of you all and I really enjoy is the Garnier Ombrelle Solaire Sensitive Advanced SPF 50 Plus. Um, this is a uh, kind of combination sunscreen. It has a variety of chemical filters, many of which are not approved for inclusion in sunscreens in the U.S., including Juvenal T150, which covers UVB, as well as, here I have them all listed here, Bimetrizinol, which covers not only UVB, but UVA1 and UVA2. This also has I Iscotrizinol, which gives you some UVB and some UVA. And it also has Mexeril SX, which goes by the long name Terephthalidine Dicamper Sulfonic. Uh, that is Mexeril SX, that is uh, L'Oreal's patented uh, filter. They have Mexeril SX and Mexeril XL. Mexeril SX is water soluble, and the XL is, is oil soluble. Um, and the Mexerils, they cover UVA really well. So this has really nice broad spectrum coverage. It's uh, three stars in terms of its UVA rating, which is good, and uh, but you know not perfect. Um, so it's it's good. It's a good broad spectrum sun sunscreen and a high SPF in terms of its ability to protect you from a burn. Uh, but what I really like about this sunscreen and who I think will enjoy using it the most is that it is very lightweight and comfortable to wear, particularly on the body as well as the face. Uh, to be frank, you can use it from head to toe. And very comfortably. It is wonderful for people with oily prone skin. It's not shiny, it's not greasy, and it's got some uh, inactives in it that help to kind of absorb excess greasiness and oiliness. So this is really nice for people with acne prone or oily, oily prone skin. It does have <clears throat> alcohol denaturant in it, which you'll find in the majority of these sunscreens. The reason the alcohol denaturant is included is that it's needed to dissolve some of these sophisticated filters. And the vehicle as a whole, the formulation as a whole, is very moisturizing and this is not super drying. So when you see alcohol denaturant, there's no reason to be alarmed. A lot of people take a yes-no approach to alcohol denaturant and that can, that can sell you short on some really fantastic sunscreens that have been formulated well and happen to include alcohol denaturant in order to get the filters to solubilize. So don't banish alcohol denaturant entirely, just know that it can be a little drying depending on how the product is formulated. But this is this is very, very nice. It's not drying whatsoever. Great for the body, great for the face, wonderful broad spectrum coverage, and I have really enjoyed using it on my face as well as my body. It's water resistant, so I like using it uh, before I go to work out. Uh, you know, I don't feel like when I'm done working out, I don't feel like I had my, my skin is kind of trapped. You know, I've got this film trapped on there. It's really nice and breathable, so it's great for humid environments. Uh, where you're outdoors a lot, I really, I really like it. It's very comfortable. This is a sunscreen that I've had actually for over a year, and I'm almost finished with it. I don't use it that often, and I actually think that they no longer make it. But I'll just mention it here. Maybe they do. I mean, I read on, on I can't really find much about it on the internet. It was sent to me by one of you all. It is the Actinica Lotion by Galderma. Um, it is SPF 50, water. I think it's water resistant, uh, fragrance free. It has really good broad spectrum chemical filters again as all of these do and is really great for people who have any kind of photosensitive disease. The vehicle formulation on this one though is pretty um, heavy. Can be a little I find it uncomfortable to wear on the face. I don't think everybody will necessarily feel that way, but just the combination of the humidity here, I find this one a little bit cloying on the face. I love it on the body and that is how I generally use it. 
Um, so, you know, uh, know that about it. It kind of, it's kind of almost like, you know, a rich moisturizing vehicle, like a shea butter consistency that can just feel very heavy and hard, like it's not breathing well on your skin. If you are one of those with rosacea that is precipitated by heavy moisturizers, um, kind of heavy products, you might find that this is not comfortable for you to wear on the face. Likewise, people with oily prone acne skin don't like the aesthetics of heavier moisturizers, so you may not care for this. But, uh, you know, I think, I think overall it's a good one, but then again, I'm not even sure they're still making it, so this could all be moved. But I did try that one. Some of you I know mentioned it several times in the comments, so I like it and I, I mostly use that one body. Um, a sunscreen that I finished up uh, recently, but I got the empty, I have the empty bottle here for, to chat about, is uh, the Eucerin Sun Protect Allergy, the Eucerin Sun Allergy Protect Cream Gel for Face and Body. I love this. It um, is four stars on the UVA rating. Uh, broad spectrum, at, you know, as all of these are. You know, when I say broad spectrum, and I'm and, and talking about the chemical sunscreens from Europe, um, you know, the, the ability of these sunscreens to give you good, reliable protection of UVA, the rays that don't necessarily burn your, don't, don't really burn your skin, but penetrate deeply, age the skin, damage collagen, and also for people with photosensitive diseases, kick off many of their symptoms. Uh, I, you know, the European sunscreens are a better choice than the American ones. I mean, in any country outside of the US, I should say. Uh, is generally going to be a better choice as far as a chemical sunscreen for giving that kind of protection reliably. Um, I'd like to do another video as a side note on, on sunscreens from Japan and Korea. Those two offer um, very good broad spectrum coverage, but today I'm just focusing on, on the European ones. Okay, so anyways, this one is wonderful. It's fragrance free. Um, it does have uh, alcohol denaturant in it again, but very comfortable to wear both on the face and on the body. On the face it is a little shiny, I'll, I'll give it that. It's water resistant and this also has a variety of licorice derived compounds, licorice root derived compounds, licorines. Uh, which are anti-inflammatory, good for redness, have some antioxidant properties to them, although antioxidants and sunscreens, their ability to scavenge free radicals is always pretty questionable. Um, but, you know, if you have redness, sensitive skin, you might find that, that those ingredients are a benefit to you. And I think this is a good choice for people with sensitive skin overall. Even if you are sensitive to chemical filters, I think you will find that this one is very, is much more comfortable than some of the others. And I've rather enjoyed it. So that one I actually finished up. And I also finished up um, the Sensitive Protect Sun Cream for Face by Eucerin SPF 50. This also has the licorice. Uh, root derived compounds in it, uh, but this one, unlike the cream gel, I found was a little bit more, as the, the aesthetics of this for the face were a little nicer, less shiny, less kind of uh, giving that greasy look to it. I don't mind that, but it is very humid here, and so sometimes that can be overboard, and I know many of you don't care for that. Um, so this is nice. It's very moisturizing and really comfortable to wear. You can wear this as your daytime moisturizer with SPF in it very high protection and this one uh, is also water resistant like the cream gel and this one is uh, four stars on the UVA rating. I went through the use for sunscreens this past spring um, is the sensitive protect sun fluid mattifying. Um, this is only three stars, uh, three UVA, three stars on the UVA rating. UVA rating we don't have here on, on our chemical sunscreens or any sunscreens in the US. We don't rate the UVA protection. We only rate the UVB protection by the SPF. Um, and as far as how the UVA protection, they just get a pass fail. So you don't know if your sunscreen is a C minus or uh, an A plus in the US, but in, in other countries, they have some sort of rating system to help guide you. So this has slightly lower, it has a lower UVA protection, it's three stars, um, but it's still very good. And the, the nice thing about this is it is a liquid vehicle rather than a cream. It's more matte, uh, so for those of you who um, want to wear, wear it with cosmetics or you just are trying to avoid any kind of 
shininess whatsoever choose this one i think you will get along with it a little better but to me they weren't strikingly different as far as the shininess factor i did still find this one a little shiny <laughs> but it reapplied comfortably the other thing that's kind of annoying about this you know most liquid vehicle sunscreens they have more of a i mean this is a little nitpicky detail they have more of a pointed tip to the applicator this is um just kind of difficult to uh, apply onto your face with this kind of rounded tip as opposed to more of a point. I, I prefer more of a, a pointed tip. I, I find it just allows you to put the sunscreen on in more of a streamlined fashion without it kind of splattering all over. Um, you know, you obviously can put it in your hands and then put it on your face, but I just like putting it right onto my skin and then rubbing it in. It's just, I, I prefer doing it that way. Okay. Then two other sunscreens, the Bioderma sunscreens. I reviewed um, the cream, I believe, in the past, but this is Bioderma Photoderm Max SPF 50 Plus. Um, I really love these sunscreens. Uh, they've got a cream formulation and a um, aqua fluid, which is more of a liquid. The more liquidy version is going to be better suited for people with oily prone skin that want more of a matte finish. And the cream is just more moisturizing and a little bit more emollient, fragrance free. These, however, I find both of them do sting a little bit. And I'm not particularly sensitive to stinging with chemical sunscreens, but these I find do sting a little bit. And I don't know what it is about these as opposed to the others. You know, I'd have to go back and really, really focus on the ingredient list to try and deduce that. But for whatever reason, these can sting a little bit for me. I still wear them comfortably. And, uh, but if you have sensitive skin, you might, you might be bothered by that. Uh, and that might, you know, that might cause irritation for you. Um, I believe the Bioderma sunscreens are, you know, pretty affordable though in, in the drugstores. Same with the Eucerin. The Eucerin ones uh, are also sold in Mexico as well. So, uh, you know, a broader, broader reach there. Okay, uh, sunscreen brand favorite. I love. It's kind of like, it's kind of like La Roche-Posay and um, Aven and using the mineral spring water. Mineral spring water and skincare products is, you know, not necessarily super gimmicky. There's some idea that the prebiotics in mineral spring water <clears throat> might be helpful in kind of supporting the skin microbiome, although that's largely preliminary data. If you're interested in that, I have a video on pre and probiotics in skincare, and I also have a video talking about the benefits of thermal spring water in skincare. But Uriage uses thermal spring water in their sunscreens, and they make fantastic ones. Uh, Uriage Berry Sun. I finished up the um, SPF 50 um, fragrance free, very high protection. This is such a comfortable sunscreen to wear. It's got, as far as the filters, it has uh, Uvenol A+, which gives you UVA1 and UVA2 coverage. It has a variety of chemical filters for UVB. It's got octinoxate, octisalate. It also has bimetrizinol, which will give you UVB, UVA1, and UVA2. So really nice, broad spectrum uh, chemical sunscreen. It does have alcohol denaturant in it. Um, but, you know, it's such a nice moisturizing vehicle. And what I really like about this is that you'll find that this is really nice for uh, oily skin. It's, it's moisturizing, but also lightweight enough. It is fragrance free, and um, so I, I really recommend this. You know, I'm not super familiar with that many mineral sunscreens uh, in Europe and in other countries, but one that I do know of, love, and enjoy and use myself, I shared it with you in my uh, mineral as high protection mineral sunscreen video is the Uriage Berry Sun uh, Cream Mineral SPF 50, uh, very high protection. This is wonderful if you have super sensitive skin or you're looking for a sunscreen that won't burn around the eyes. It's a mineral sunscreen. It's formulated with zinc titanium dioxide. And uh, so that means there is uh, a little bit of a cast associated with this one, but it's pretty, it's pretty mild, mild to moderate. If you are a darker skin type, you, you may not care for it, but the zinc and titanium dioxide that is used in this product, they, bo they both are nano-sized, so they're smaller particles, and that allows for a better aesthetic as far as the cast, but in nano-sizing the um, mineral actives, you do lose a little bit of that broad spectrum UVA protection that you would have from non-nano 
sized uh, zinc titanium dioxide. Uh, so, you know, that's a limitation of it. But this, this is really nice. Uh, very, very comfortable to wear, water resistant, oil free, great for not only sensitive skin, but acne prone skin as well. It's not greasy. And you know, a lot of mineral sunscreens can be kind of drying. This one is not drying at all. Uh, it's, it's, it's a nice moisturizer with high mineral coverage. But really quickly, uh, I, I can't do a video on sunscreens uh, from Europe without mentioning the Altruist. This is, uh, you can buy this on Amazon UK and I strongly encourage you to buy it uh, because a portion of the proceeds go to a phenomenal charity under the same sun, uh, which supports services for individuals with albinism uh, in, in, throughout Africa who don't have access to the resources that they need. Great, great charity. And these sunscreens are really affordable, fragrance free, perfect for sensitive skin and uh, perfect actually for acne prone skin. Nothing in these that will, you know, should, should cause problems with acne whatsoever. There's no alcohol denaturant in these and the UVA rating is five stars. So really high, ultra high protection against UVA. If you have a photosensitive disease uh, like polymorphous light eruption uh, or you're on a medication that makes you sensitive to the sun, oh, please consider these. They are fantastic. Very affordable. Even to buy them on Amazon UK and have them shipped to the US is pretty inexpensive. So I strongly encourage considering them. The SPF 50 is a little shiny on the face. I enjoy wearing it, have no issue with it, but when I wear it and I see a video footage, I'm like, well, I'm definitely wearing the 50 today because I can see that shininess. The 30 uh, is not as shiny. But the advantage to using an SPF 50 over an SPF 30 is that most consumers don't apply enough sunscreen to achieve the SPF on the bottle so higher is better to make up for that uh, that uh, that fact um, so you know I recommend the 50 but a lot of people won't care for it on the face it is pretty shiny Altruist also makes a sunscreen spray that I have not used before. You know, I've said this in several videos, but I'll say it again. Sprays are not as reliable in terms of giving an even distribution of sunscreen ingredients and, and giving protection, but they probably can work. We just don't know as much about sprays as we do about cream lotion vehicles. Um, but, uh, you know, a limitation with them is that a lot of times you spray them and a lot of it ends up going out into the air. So if you use them, I recommend spraying them into your hands and then rubbing them on the area. Spray vehicles uh, can actually be a lot better to, a lot easier to tolerate in the scalp. Uh, some of you are always asking me about scalp SPF um, and spray vehicles can sometimes be a little bit easier in the scalp particularly if you have hair on your head, uh, you're not totally bald and you're trying to protect your exposed scalp, uh, the spray vehicles can be a little bit easier to work into the scalp. All right, and then Ultrasun is a brand of sunscreens. I've, I've used the, there's an anti-aging one that uh, I've used in the past, I no longer have, I used it up and rather enjoyed, so I won't, you know, go into detail on that one. But their SPF 30 Family High Protection Sensitive Skin is also very good. This one is, you know, fragrance free, it is water resistant, and it's got uh, anti, you know, antioxidants in sunscreens. I caution you to not put too much enthusiasm into them because as I've said in other videos, their ability to scavenge free radicals is always questionable, not to mention, uh, the way sunscreens are formulated to form such a barrier, uh, you know, film, they don't really allow the antioxidants to really get in. But this has grapeseed extract in it. Uh, so when they say infrared protection, they're kind of referring to the presence of antioxidants. There's no sunscreen filter or active ingredient that will protect against infrared. Infrared is largely heat, and heat can be very damaging to the skin and uh, in generating free radicals. So the inclusion of antioxidants is where they'll, where they'll make the claim of infrared protection. But those claims aside, I really enjoy this one. It's a little shiny, uh, but not as shiny as the Altruist SPF 50. All right, and then this is a sunscreen that's newer to me that a viewer sent me and uh, it's sold in Germany and I love it. It is Sundance SPF 50. This is fantastic for oily prone skin, um, sensitive skin. 
It is a you know, chemical sunscreen. It does have alcohol denaturant in it, but it doesn't burn or sting whatsoever. This one actually is vegan. It, in addition to the chemical ingredients, so this one also has titanium dioxide. And so there is a slight white cast to this one. Um, so, you know, be aware of that, but I love this. Very comfortable to wear and nice to, nice to be able to recommend a vegan sunscreen to you guys as well. All right, and then just finishing up with two sunscreens that, for those of you who wear cosmetics uh, or have oily skin, these are great. Uh, these go great with makeup uh, as far as putting it on and then allowing it to dry and then putting your makeup on over it. First up is La Roche-Posay Shaka Fluid. I love this, finished it up. Um, and I've reviewed this for you guys, so check out that review. I'm not gonna go you know, reiterate everything from that, but this is really comfortable to wear and it has a nice matte finish. A, a note though, I'll point out, make sure you get the fragrance-free one. They have one with fragrance. Same holds true for the Berry Sun. I believe Berry Sun SPF 50 has one with fragrance in it, so make sure you get the fragrance-free one. Um, but La Roche-Posay Shaka Fluid, this is great for people with oily skin or people who are looking for a matte finish for makeup. Uh, but one that is great for um, under makeup, I believe this is sold in Greece, actually. Um, I'm not sure where, what other countries have this. Um, so uh, I don't know that it's available everywhere, but I know it's, it's a Greek sunscreen. It's Fresiderm uh, Sunscreen New Velvet Technology. Um, I have the SPF 30, but they also make an SPF 50 of this. Um, and it has, it's a nice uh, uh, colorless, uh, clear uh, emollient uh, vehicle that just goes on the skin and almost sinks into the skin with this powdery finish that is really nice for applying cosmetics on over it. Yeah, it's kind of a cushiony, um, colorless uh, consistency, and it just goes on and then sinks into the skin like pow it almost has a powdery, it has this powdery finish to it. Anyways, those are all of the sunscreens that I have to review for you guys uh, from Europe. Again, thank you so much to everyone who has sent these to me. It is honestly too much. Uh, you guys do not need to spend that kind of money on shipping and, and whatnot. I am you know, very appreciative to you for doing that, but it's not necessary. Uh, but comment below, those of you in other countries outside of the States, what sunscreen you're using. I love learning about different brands. Obviously, I'm gonna be most familiar with what's sold here. So hearing from you guys is really helpful to me and I greatly appreciate it. And I hope you liked this video. I hope it was helpful. And if so, give it a thumbs up, share it with your friends. And as always, don't forget, sunscreen and subscribe. I'll talk to you guys tomorrow, bye.